Want to speak real English from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at EnglishClass101.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Alicia. In this lesson, I'm going to talk about when to use apostrophe s and when to use of. Let's get started. First, I want to talk about the situations when we use apostrophe s. So we commonly refer to this as the possessive form. So we attach apostrophe s to some noun or a noun phrase. We use apostrophe s when we're talking about something that belongs to another person. So when I say something that belongs to another person, this can mean an object like a pen or a shirt, or it can mean something about that person's physical appearance. Physical appearance means the way they look, or it can be about their personality. So what kind of personality does that person have? What are their characteristics? So we use apostrophe s when we're referring to these kinds of things relating to people. Let's look at some examples of this. First, this group of examples features apostrophe s including an object. So for example, my brother's car my mom's favorite album, or my friend's keys. We use apostrophe s because this is an object that belongs to a person. If I used of in these sentences, it would sound very unnatural. For example, the car of my brother, or the favorite album of my mom, or the keys of my friend. It sounds very unnatural to use these kinds of patterns. So because we're talking about objects that belong to a person, use the possessive form, this apostrophe s. Let's look at some more examples. These are things, again, objects that belong to another person. In this case, not just my, 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 but another person outside us. For example, your roommate's computer or his girlfriend's water bottle. So again, we're talking about objects that belong to a person. Even if that person is outside us, unrelated to us, we use apostrophe s to naturally show possession, to naturally show ownership. Finally, down here, let's look at some examples that talk about someone's personality or their characteristics. My friend's personality, or his mother's cleanliness, or his father's beard. This is not a personality point, this is a physical appearance point. But you can see how in all of these example sentences, we continue to use the apostrophe s to show ownership. So this my friend's personality means the personality belonging to my friend, or his mother's cleanliness. This shows the cleanliness belonging to his mother. This beard here belongs to the speaker's friends, perhaps, father. So we're using this apostrophe s to show ownership of something. So please make sure to use apostrophe s in situations such as these. Another important point about apostrophe s use is that apostrophe s is commonly used with time periods. So time periods means like days or weeks or months, for example. It can also mean points in time or periods of time in a day. For example, this morning's meeting. Here, morning is my time period or my point in time in this case. This morning's meeting. This means the meeting that happened this morning or the meeting that's going to happen this morning. So we can think of this as a meeting belonging to this morning. We use apostrophe s to show this. We do not say the meeting of this morning. It sounds very unnatural. Another example, the year's best music. The year's best music. So here I have this time period, the year, the last year or this year perhaps. Apostrophe s, best music. So this means the best music 
belonging to the year. We would not say the best music of the year necessarily. I suppose you could, but in lots of marketing materials, you see this apostrophe S used. It kind of shows uh, a little bit of closeness, that possessive form. Okay, the next one, this evening's menu. This evening's menu. So again, the menu which belongs to this evening. This is one that you might also see used with the of pattern, perhaps. So using the of pattern kind of makes things like this sound a little bit more formal or a little bit more polite. So for example, the menu of this evening might not be so natural um, or the menu of the evening might be something you could hear. Um, but the reason that we don't use of as often perhaps in situations such as these is because it tends to make the situation sound a little more formal or a little more polite. So when I said in this example sentence, the best music of the year, you might hear that, for example, at an award ceremony, like the best artist of the year or artist of the year. Something like that has a little bit of importance to it. When we want to give more importance to something, we might use the of pattern. So these are two situations where you might see that. We would not do it in the situations I've talked about, or the situations I spoke about earlier when talking about things belonging to people. There are some cases uh, where we might use an of pattern when talking about time periods. So these are maybe a couple of cases where you may see of used. Okay, so we can use this with time periods as well, and it is commonly used with time periods. Let's compare this then to situations where we use of. So, of is used when explaining something that is part of or belongs to something larger. So, note, yes, I'm using this belongs to here, but this is for like objects. So, not things that belong to people. This is for like uh, perhaps organizations or, as I said, objects. Let's take a look at some examples of this. Here, the leader of the group, or the end of the video, or the top of the mountain. So in each of these situations, we're expressing like a relationship between a part and a whole. In the first example sentence, the group, the group is my whole, and the leader is one part. So we often use of, when we're talking about like the top person in an organization or in a group. So this is why we use like leader of the group. Or if you've watched the video about using of on this channel, the queen of England or the head of the company. Those are expressions we use to talk about the top person in a group. So they are part of a group or an organization. The second example, the end of the video refers to one part of the video. So if we watch the video, watch the video, watch the video, this part here is the end part of the video. We use of to show that relationship. Finally, the top of the mountain, the top of the mountain. Again, if we imagine a mountain and we imagine one part, we can describe that with of connecting that name, top, to the name of the whole mountain, the top of the mountain. Of course, there are some cases where we choose to phrase things a little bit differently. For example, the mountain top is a word. Um, but in these cases, it's more natural to use of than it is to use apostrophe s. So, for example, if I said the mountain's top, it wouldn't sound as natural as the top of the mountain. If I said the video's end, it wouldn't sound as natural as the end of the video. The group's leader could be okay because it's related to a person, um, but you might hear this one a little more often, the leader of the group. Okay, with that in mind, let's look at another way that we use of. We use of when explaining what something is made from. So we use this when talking about material. So if I want to talk about the material my shirt is made from, I could use of to describe that. Let's look at some examples though. A necklace of gold, a sweater made of wool, shoes 
made of leather. So here in these examples, I'm talking about materials, gold, wool, and leather. You'll notice that I've got made in parentheses here. We can drop that made because this use of of is showing us what something is made from. So not everybody chooses to include made, but you can. Um, so a necklace of gold means a necklace made from gold. A sweater made of wool means a sweater made from wool. So that's another way to say it. Both are fine. You can choose which you prefer. Shoes made of leather. So we're connecting the material to the object with of here. So again, uh, this is not a situation where we would use this possessive form because actually here, there's no possession happening. The necklace is not possessing gold or the sweater is not possessing wool. Rather, we're talking about the components, the pieces that work together to create this other thing. So definitely do not use apostrophe S in situations such as this. So I hope that this lesson gives you a good guideline for when to use apostrophe S and when to use of. Remember, apostrophe S is great to use and very natural to use when you're talking about people and things that belong to people. Remember, use of when you're talking about something that is part of something else or when you're describing the materials that are used to make something. So if you have any questions or comments or if you want to practice making some sentences with this grammar, please feel free to do so in the comment section of this video. Of course, if you like this lesson, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you have not already, and check us out at EnglishClass101.com for some other things that can help you with your English studies. Thanks very much for watching this lesson and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.